When it comes to product and food photography, there are so many angles to choose from, but some are far more effective than others, depending on the features you're trying to showcase in your food or products. So let's talk about the most useful angles and when to choose each one. Hey guys, Mandy of Replica Surfaces here. In this video, we're talking about why certain angles don't look quite the way you expect them to, the three best angles you can use in your content creation, and when to choose each one of them. So enough chit chat, let's break them all down. The three workhorse angles to know are overhead, eye level, and 45 degrees. The first thing to think about when deciding which one to use is where the detail is located on your object. Is it on the top, on the side, or both? If the details are mostly on the side, eye level is gonna be your go-to angle. For me, this is my go-to for food and products the majority of the time. Eye level photos make items look tall and majestic, and you can create a depth by blurring the background. A really good example is this cake photo. There's so much detail on the side, but there's really nothing more to show on the top of the cake. Another example is a skincare product. All the detail the viewer needs to see is on the label on the side. There's nothing going on on top. Contrast this photo with the same shot, but taken at a 45 degree angle. No detail gained, but now the product looks really small and the angle has caused everything to be more in focus at the same f-stop. Same thing with this vase. Looks great at eye level. Seeing the top in a 45 degree angle shot really adds nothing. So how do you shoot an eye level photo? The first step is to place two backdrops in an L shape so that one becomes your table and the other becomes your wall. If you're using replica surfaces, replica stands make this setup super easy. Next, position your main object in the center of your horizontal surface, leaving at least six inches like we did with the skincare bottle. This will let you blur the background. If you want to include background and foreground props, place them in a back corner and in the opposite front corner to create a diagonal like this. This is something I call the diagonal composition, and I go into it in depth in my compositions video, which I'll link to below. Next, shoot using a shallow depth of field on a DSLR, using portrait mode on an iPhone, or using the Lightroom mobile app if you're an Android camera phone user. I go into detail about how to do this in my depth perfection and my phone photography videos. I'll link to both of them. Now, position your camera directly in front of your scene and at eye level and shoot. If you're using a phone camera, get truly eye level by flipping your phone upside down so that the lens is flush with your subject and not angling downward like it would be if you held your phone upright. Next up is the 45 degree angle shot. We just saw examples of when it doesn't work, but when it does work is when your object has interesting features on both the side and the top, and you want your viewer to see both. A great example is this coconut smoothie bowl. The 45 angle shows both the side and the smoothie inside of it. Contrast this with eye level that doesn't reveal the smoothie and the flat lay version that doesn't make it clear it's in a coconut. Here are some other examples where the composition has both side and top details. What's great about this angle is that when you shoot with a shallow depth of field and you manually focus on your subject only, you can create visually appealing focus gradient where the foreground is out of focus, the subject is in focus, and the background is out of focus again. One word of caution with the 45 angle though, most of the time you'll want to zoom in so that only the horizontal surface is in your shot. You can take a 45 angle that includes both the horizontal and the vertical surfaces, but your subject often looks more puny this way than if you get in really close. And you'll have to select an even shallower depth of field to keep the background blurred. Here's the same coconut bowl pulled back showing both surfaces, and here it is zoomed in so that you only see one of them. Before we move on to the next angle, let's just take a quick sec to subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a quick like. I really appreciate that. On to flat lay. You're probably already familiar with flat lay or shooting from directly overhead. This angle works wonderfully for objects with details on the top and nothing important on the side. We're talking things like bowls and plates containing ingredients for a deconstructed dish like this shot or stationary. Photographing these objects from another angle wouldn't make any sense since you'd see the side of a bowl and not its contents, or you'd see the side of a piece of paper. For more on flat lay styling, you can check out my videos on both flat lay food and product styling next for tips on how to actually style your flat lays. So now that your composition is looking lovely, it's time for the best part, 
the photo shoot. You'll want to position your DSLR or phone camera directly above your scene. To keep it steady, consider investing in a tripod with a 90 degree arm like this one that can hold your camera. Alternatively, you can just hold your phone facing downward. You just have to be very careful about motion blur, which is the natural shake in your hands when you're holding something yourself. And a quick word of caution, try to resist the urge to always lay tall objects like beauty products and candles on their side and shoot from overhead. These objects definitely look good on their side sometimes, but they usually look their best and their most mature majestic when you stand them upright and shoot at eye level. If you want to add extra height, you can use risers like these bathroom tiles or a couple of coasters. To take your flat lay shots to the next level, use tall items to add some dynamic movement and framing of your subject for your overhead shot. Check out the way Heather's Home Bakery used this technique with this cup of coffee. Because the subject is coffee and you can only see the coffee itself from above, she chose flat lay. But she also used a tall carafe and a plant to add depth to her photo. To keep the plant blurred like this, you need to select your focal zone manually on a DSLR camera, or you can use an app like the Lightroom mobile app to control your phone manually. Check out my phone photography video to see exactly how to do that. Sometimes making a small change lets you get more than one angle. For example, this breakfast cookie scene. It's all flat, we've laid the cookies down completely. But if you stand one cookie up to give side detail, then you can grab a few eye level shots too and really increase the amount of content you have from one photo shoot. So that's that. The three angles you need to know and how to choose one over the other depending on what you're trying to show your audience. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy quick tips like this, definitely come at us on Instagram and TikTok. We dish out tips nearly every day.